So I'm going to be going into the shed today uh, to do a final tally. I need a uh, count on my hives just to know what I have going on. Um, I pulled out my headlamp and a new battery in it and I lost my red lens so I used this uh, permanent red marker just to color out the lens um, to remove some of that white light. The light spectrum that you see is shifted uh, up from the red into the ultraviolet so it's just kind of shifted up and they don't see the red light uh, because of that or they don't see it very well so that's why we uh, wear these red headlamps and we I don't have red lights in my winter shed yet but that's why we use red just to keep the bees from recognizing the light uh, so they don't get disturbed and they don't fly to their hives to the light and it allows us to work in the shed with, a, with very minimal disturbance. I'm pulling out my uh, face mask it's really important we wear this to keep our lungs healthy, uh, just to keep the dust and the mold spores out of our lungs. There's always that old story of the old beekeepers who pass away with uh, beekeepers' lungs, you know, farmer's lung, like little bits and pieces of legs and wings and dust, bee dust in their lungs. So we gotta stay healthy. Um, I'm gonna test the CO2 just to see what's going on in the shed. I assume it's not overly high. It's minus 15 outside right now, and the fan's off the idle set. It's it's ramped up, so it's it's moving quite a bit of air circulation th through the shed right now, which is a good sign. Which means I have live bees. Yes, so I don't. I expect the CO2 levels to be much the same as outdoor uh, levels. They say between 500 and 800. I think it is is normal outside. No, it's 500 outside and about 800 in the building. And then I don't expect it any more than a thousand within the winter shed. So we'll see what it's like in there. I get asked a lot about CO2 levels in the shed. I mean, I get asked a lot. And I have to be frank, I don't know what that level is. I know guys have their shed set at 3,500 parts per million. Um, and you think 5,000 would be a lot. Just because that's a range where it's unhealthy for humans. Whether or not it's unhealthy for insects like honeybees, I really don't know. Because there, there's a bit of, you know, just the way the bees uh, organize themselves through the winter and create that winter cluster. And they almost, it's like they encase themselves in a, a CO2 envelope, which just helps them uh, zone out and drift through the winter. And within their cluster that the CO2 levels have been reported to be extremely high. So what, how the ambient uh, CO2 levels, how that affects the CO2 levels within that cluster, I actually really have no idea. It's something I'm, I'm interested in and something I think we should look into. Um, but just keeping the levels of CO2 within the building below 3,500 is probably a good idea because we don't want to hurt ourselves either. So when we go in the shed just to check on them or do some work, um, we got to keep healthy ourselves. So anyways, I'm going to go with sweep the aisles and just to keep my boots clean. I don't expect a lot of drop in the floor, but uh, sweep the aisles and do a count and just poke into, uh, just shine a light into a few entrances to see if I can see my babies and we'll see what's up. As you can see, there's a little bit of bee drop. Just a scattering all the way down the aisle. So I'll get this swept up. So when I first moved the hives in here and closed the door for the final time, I turned off all the fans and uh, made this place completely silent. And I could hear this overwhelming roar of the hives as they sat in, in the room here. And it was just an awesome sound, just an awesome sound of life and just like, it's probably about 40 to 50 million bees 
in the shed all making a little bit of noise. Now I work in the shed today and it is absolutely quiet. These guys have settled right in and they're establishing their winter cluster and they're in a way they're drifting into winter. They're zoning out and they're drifting into winter. I noticed as I made my appearance in the shed here today I swept the floors taken me about 20 minutes and I've turned the lights on like this this red light here and, and I've been filming a little bit through with this camera so there's been some white light and because of that I've noticed like some of these babies are uh, making an appearance it's coming out to the entrance very docile very uh, slow But they're coming out the front. I'm not noticing it a whole lot with my uh, with my other singles. There's some of these uh, bigger singles are coming out. But uh, for the most part, this place is absolutely quiet, and the cl clusters are calm and peaceful. And I want to show you something. What I'm seeing. I still have my entrance reducers in the most of them. And I was debating whether or not I was going to take them out or not. This is a lot of work. But the problem is, if I leave them in, is uh, the hives can't circulate their air inside and remove the moisture effectively. So I'm not seeing any evidence of uh, moisture problems yet. It's like really early into winter here. But uh, these, these eyes only have a small little space there, so they could run into condensation issues. Kind of like what I'm seeing with my nukes right now. I'll show you not uh, a lot of them, but some of them. We'll find one here. So here's one with uh, moisture around the edges. And it doesn't have a lot to circulate because it's got a little entrance there. Great big nuke inside. Just leave them on. Here's a, a, a nuke with a moisture issue already. It's a great big cluster. So they need the entrances off. Here's another one here. Let's see what's behind. So these guys aren't getting enough air circulation. And condensation is building up and running out the front. So I'm going to have to see this white light stirring them up a bit now. So I'm going to have to think about on a next cold day, I'll purge this shed with uh, cold air and just to pull them, just to pull all the uh, clusters back from the front. And I'm going to take off all these entrances. I should be able to do it if I can cool the shed right down. I can do it without them uh, coming at me. See the condensation around the outside of the clusters? So I just want to be able to remove that excess moisture. It'll just help with mold issues. So it's minus 15 out right now. And my air intakes, you can see, are frosted up. There's a fair bit of cool air coming in. Both my uh, vents are wide open. I have my ceiling fans. There's 10 ceiling fans up top. And they're turning just ever so nicely just to keep the, the air circulating up and around these uh, rows of bees. So the far side of the shed is where I have my air exit. This is where the fans are inside. Just the same type of ventilation shaft. So this, this is an 8 inch fan. And this side is like a 12, I believe. And this side is my idle, so it, it'll go, it'll ramp down to idle, 
it'll keep turning at all times just to keep constant air circulation within the shed and the lowest speed is about like what you would expect a, a table fan set on medium just blowing out air so that gives the shed plenty of continuous fresh air I have a lot of bees in here so I don't uh, have my fan shut off on me I just have continuous set on idle and then as the temperature increases this this fan will ramp up in speed and pull more air through the shed and then over eight degrees this one turns on and purges the shed so my controllers are over here and what I have going is extremely simple uh, this is my fan speed ceiling fan so I have that set low uh, my lights are turned off and they're bolted off this is my idle, so I have it, I have it set at 4 degrees Celsius and a, an idle speed of 4, so that's about where I want it. I can decrease it or I can increase it, but I keep it about 4 at 4 degrees. And then this is my uh, secondary fan, so it's set at uh, 8 degrees. So at 8 degrees Actually, at 6 degrees, this will turn on and start um, circulating, circulating the air slowly. And when it hits 8 degrees, it is at full speed. So this is where I set my temperature and my uh, continuous ramp uh, speed here. So I have two modules. And this way, too, they're both on separate circuits. So if there's a breaker that goes, there's always a fan that will be going. And when it gets really warm, both these fans will be purging. So that's, what I, that's how I keep the temperature down within my shed. I just keep pulling the cold air uh, from the outside. As it warms up, it ramps up, and as it cools down, they slow down. Now, I haven't had to add any heat to this building since I started wintering bees inside. It's just the mass amount of bees within this shed uh, keeps this place as warm as it needs to be. So I'm just going to do a final count here. So if there's let's say roughly 1,500 units in this shed, and every um, every hive will give off roughly 10, 15, maybe 20 watts of energy, heat energy. Um, that means that it's almost equivalent to a heater that's the size of like an 18, 18,000 to 20,000 watt heater. So that's a lot of heat these guys generate and that's why I generally don't have to add a lot of heat to my winter shed. It's just because uh, of the massive amount of heat that they create and we have to get it out. So you can see these guys are in rest state. I'm disturbing them with the light right now. That was way back there. But from the entrance these guys look awesome. So I'm going to test the carbon dioxide in the shed just for curiosity's sake. So I'm going to use this device here. And right now it's reading in the, uh, the common room office room here, uh, 779 parts per million. So that's my indoor reading. I'm going to take this now uh, into the shed and see what we got. So I got the carbon dioxide monitor uh, in the shed just to see what the CO2 levels are and just standing in the open spot in the shed and it's reading 2136 parts per million at 5.4 degrees celsius 45 percent humidity i just want to show you something neat we'll walk down into the down the aisle in the middle of the shed in between the mass of bees here's my bees So here it's registering 2170 parts per million at 8.1 degrees Celsius and 52% humidity. So that's, you know, within 10 feet, uh, 15 feet within the shed here. So that's kind of neat. That just shows you how much heat's given off these bees. As you can see, the difference in temperatures there between the rows and in the open spot in the shed. Um, later on in spring, 
I'll actually uh, turn these fans on and I'll purge and I'll try to blow and mix the air a lot more aggressively and that just helps mix like the difference in temperatures here will just help pull that excess um, heat out of the building and outside. So I'd say right now they're getting a little stirred up because of all my disturbance but for the most part these guys are quite calm and silent. So I have all the hives tallied up. Uh, it's not that complicated because everything's pretty straightforward. I have singles and for some reason I put some double hives in. <clears throat> and I doubled up some of my nukes. So, I did, But for the most part I counted them up to 303 nukes and 1101 uh, full-sized hives. I thought I had more than that in there. I guess I called out a few more through the fall than I really expected I did. I thought I had 1,200, but I obviously have 1,101, which gives me a total hive count of 1,404 uh, units in my winter shed. So that's good. Uh, looking through the entrances, uh, everything seemed to be adequate and uh, I just have to remove the entrances uh, from our from the hives because I'm seeing some condensation issues like I showed you. And I'll just cool down the shed on a really cold day just to pull the bees back into clusters so I can take the entrances out without them attacking me. And we're done for now. Uh, and then the uh, I'm going to enter these numbers into my overwinter bee mortality insurance uh, document here. Um, this is a program run in Manitoba uh, which just helps protect um, producers from major uh, losses, loss events. It's an expensive program um, and it has a high deductible but it more or less covers you for a disaster and I find that very important. We're dealing with a lot of debt our farm has a lot of debt and uh, just trying to mitigate the risk if I have a heavy loss and I have to go buy all these colonies that's a big hit to our bottom line so I just got to make sure we protect uh, my investment and just build a this is just one more way of managing risk. So I was just curious what the CO2 level would be inside the hive around the cluster and so I found a hive here that is uh, accessible like they're not stacked as high as the rest. So I just pulled the cork out and I'll just try to do the reading here. Turn this upside down. So I was reading uh, 66, 6700, no, 8700 parts per million. Just sticking this uh, little probe through the cork. With the 74 3% humidity and the ambient air temperature here is 8 degrees but it, within the within the cavity of the the hive it's reading over 8,000 parts per million 75% relative humidity so that just shows you a little bit uh, they talk about that carbon dioxide envelope um, around the cluster and they say that what that does is just helps the bees uh, kind of zone out and drift into ah, this thing and just kind of drift through winter it just helps them um, they don't bees don't go into dormancy but it just helps them slow down and endure longer periods of time so I thought that it was really neat so those little bees in there are keeping a pretty high carbon dioxide level within their, their hive body. What, how does that interact with the carbon dioxide level within the winter shed? That is the question. Um, I think maintaining a, a lower carbon dioxide level within the shed here will just help keep us safe in the shed. So that's important. Um, anything like over 5,000 parts per million is it's not very healthy for humans to be working in. But for the carbon dioxide level to get up to 5,000 isn't going to make a damn of a difference if they're holding a level of, like this one, 
just from the outside here, just sticking the probe into the cork, it was 8,000 parts per million. So uh, take that for what it's worth, but that's just a pretty cool uh, observation. The cork's back in, and here, just reading the, uh, the carbon dioxide levels here and there now, and it is reading 1,600 actually now, at five degrees with 40% humidity in the shed. So that's quite the difference from the outside um, levels to the inside levels.